So, I want to define some efficiencies here. And this is in order to make things very uh, general. It might seem like uh, crazy things to you, but for the generation medium, this is this one up here. What you want from stuff when you generate is uh, power. Uh, this is the power you do generate, and this is the power you then divided by the power that you could have gotten if you used this force ideally. So this is the ideal thing. This is force times relative velocity difference between the vehicle and the medium. So this is this might seem a bit uh, theoretical to you, but uh, this will be worth the uh, effort later. The same way we'll define the propulsion thing. When you do propulsion, what you want is a propulsion propulsive force, and then for the same for for the power you do have this propulsive power here. This is the force you could have had if you had made the propulsion ideally. So this would look like this. So if you have these definitions and move things around, you end up having uh, something like this. So this is the efficiencies for the generation part, for the transmission part, and for the propulsion part. And these are relative velocity differences from the vehicle to the two media. This is accounting for the power, accounting for the forces, you end up with something that simple. And that's really all there is to it. And then you say, oh, well, what is this now? Let's, let's look at it. So this is the wind turbine car we had from before. You look at from the ground, the car is going by with this velocity V. The wind is coming with the V infinity, like that. And then um, let's look at it from the car uh, coordinate system. Well, if I sit on the car, then the ground is coming to me with V and then the velocity is coming towards me with or the air coming towards me with the free stream velocity plus the car velocity. And that's what we have in this, this case. So both velocities are coming towards me from the same side. I, I didn't I forgot to mention that uh, over here that this is also the case when I put up this equation. So this equation is valid for if I am sitting on a vehicle, both media come towards me from the same side. So, for the wind turbine, this was the equation we had for, and this for the wind turbine car, generation velocity is the velocity of the air relative to the car. So this is car motion and free stream velocity. And then uh, the propulsion velocity is just the velocity of, of the ground towards me, which is the car speed. And then put everything those into there and then move a little bit around you see this is the relation we get for the velocity ratio of the car the car velocity would be equal to this thing times free stream velocity measured in when you just stand on the ground and so you see here there's uh, one over something and then there's one over something again so these efficiencies if a system is, is ideal then efficiency is one and uh, but in, in reality, it's hard to obtain a, a, t a totally efficient system. So if we just look at what happens if the efficiency, <coughs> the, the product of the efficiencies, go towards one, well, then if that goes towards one, then this thing goes towards uh, one from above, and then goes to towards zero, and this goes to infinity. So you can go as long as you can increase efficiencies. You can go as fast as you want without an upper limit. This looks like that in graphical form. This is the product of all the efficiencies. And this is one. And uh, if some of you knew what the results were last year we raised, then the maximum velocities was uh, down here. So there is, uh, you could say, room for improvement at least. So, this is uh, the theory. There's, uh, it's unbounded. But uh, what does this correspond to in real life? Yeah, well, now I just have the efficiency as I'm just waving my hands here. I would like to introduce a rotor, uh, one of the sim most simple ways, and, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to go into detail, but, but probably most of you who sit here today know this 1D momentum theory, and those who will see the video might not know it, and I will just rather refer them to a book where they can read about it, that would be 
probably uh, Wind Energy Handbook or uh, in a simpler form, uh, Martin Henson's uh, Aerodynamics of Wind Turbines or something like that. But the, the, the result from this thing is, um, I'll just skip to the result here, is that the thrust on a wind turbine uh, you know, is equal to this thing multiplied by that thing. And this A is how much you slow down the air uh, seen from the rotor. I mean, how, how much, if the air and speed is 1 here, then it's 1 minus A here. And actually a result of this uh, theory also says that then the, res uh, the velocity is here 1 minus 2A. So if we, if we have A is 0 0.2 and we have 10 meters per second here, then it's 8 meters per second there and 6 meters per second in the wake as seen in a system where this rotor is uh, standing still. So the, th the thrust is, is uh, thrust coefficient defined like this is, uh, is given from, from the actual induction, this A here. And the power is, uh, is uh, looks a little, rather much like it, but there is a 1 minus A on it even, even more. So these are just classical results for, well, the most simple way you can cons consider a, a, a rotor. So we wanted to determine how fast we could go. And this uh, rotor thing is the generation in, 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 this, in this case. So we wanted to determine this thing here. So if you just uh, put in these uh, CP and CT power and thrust coefficients, and this is then the drag on the rest of the car. Because anything uh, concerned with the generation medium, which is the air, that is uh, the thrust forces and it is the power you get from it, and then it's the drag on the rest of the car. So this is an, uh, an ordinary drag coefficient, as you, you uh, see it. And um, when you put that everything in, you end up with an expression looking like this. So we have a power coefficient, a thrust coefficient, and then a drag coefficient on the rest of the car, and then an area ratio between the car area of the rest of the car and the area of the rotor. So this is what you end up with in this case. So let's see what, what happens if we stick in something ideal for the rest of the car. So let's say we don't have drag, that's probably not very realistic. No transmission loss, no rolling resistance. Then we get the, trans the generation efficiency is 1 minus A. So we can see if we really want to make this car efficient, if there's no losses, and the rotor is ideal 1D momentum thing, then we actually want to set let, let this go to 1, that, that is let the induction go to 0. So we barely want to touch the air, and that results in a velocity ratio like this, which of course goes to infinity, as we showed earlier. So this is uh, not terribly realistic. What happens when you do have a drag or rolling resistance or or something else is that, that this uh, this drops and the optimum is not no longer not doing anything to the air or almost not doing anything to the air but then it, it, it increases then you need a production you need a uh, fr from the from the rotor so but at least what you can see from it is that uh, the rotor design for a wind turbine car is something that you, you don't you don't necessarily want the biggest production. The biggest production for for this case is by maximizing this one. This is by uh, choosing a equal to a, a third. This is not what you want for a wind turbine car. You want to do something different. So you can uh, you can actually show here. Never mind the red curve. This is how much drag you've got on on the car. And this is the third, this is the optimal for the wind turbine. And this is the best actual induction you can choose. And it's only for uh, an incredibly bad car, actually a car with infinitely much drag on it, that you would want to choose the thing that we want to choose when we build a wind turbine. So that's kind of interesting. <laughs>